Bob Gallion is one of the foremost battery experts in the world. Bob, I'm dying to talk to you because what is going on here? You know, there's so much uncertainty about, you know, electric vehicles going into the future. Mm -hmm. There's so much of a push to bring all that battery manufacturing and other manufacturing back into the United States. Mm -hmm. What's your outlook? Where do we stand? Well, before you do that, John, I'd like to say thank you to Informal Marcus for doing just a great job of putting this whole battery show together. This is my 14th year of being the chairman of this event. And we've seen a lot of different changes in the industry over those 14 years, but now we're into a situation where everybody's wondering what's going to happen next because we got a different administration. We're still trying to figure that all out. But at the same time, I don't see anything slowing down right now. People are enthusiastic about battery technology because battery technology is used in a lot of other things other than just electric vehicles. And many people recognize that. Now we need to convince our government that we need to do that. When I was in Washington in uh, June of this year, I got a chance to hear Senator Markowski, Senator Cotton, and Senator Eagenlooper making comments about that very topic, that we need the battery industry to be good and whole because we got so many different technologies that depend on batteries to be whole because so many things are driven by battery technology, right? So I'm honored to be here as the chairman of this event for 14 straight years and participate by introducing some of the finest speakers in the world just this morning, and after my opening speech, we had a great panel session that we talked about exactly what you just asked me about. Then we had both uh, Kurt Kelty of General Motors and Bob Lee of LG Energy Solutions give great speeches about their respective businesses. And then we had an award ceremony for giving uh, three different levels of awards for different uh, uh, groups of people and uh, ener energy storage and uh, electric vehicles and uh, batteries themselves. So it was really an honor to do that this morning. That's great, that's good to hear. So what do you think? You know, we, the U.S. got a chance of really becoming a significant battery producer? Well, during that uh, session this morning, John, I made the comments that you're not gonna catch up with China, but we need the manufacturing technology to make batteries for our, our own country. If you want to beat China at making batteries, you've got to leapfrog them. That means you have to come up with a whole new technology. And that's what the meeting I just left to come from to come and interview with you that I just talked about. Because we're working on a whole generation of new technologies that could potentially leapfrog what China's doing. Anything that you can say right now or do no. we have to wait? Okay. <laughs> you know me, I have to ask. <laughs> of course you have to. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. What's your uh, sense though of what's going to happen with EV sales in the United States right now? Well, right now I think they're just going to stay a little bit level until we catch back, catch back on it. The electric vehicle batteries uh, are more uh, consistent in drivability. They don't have the kind of breakdowns that you have with ICEs. You have less maintenance on them. Basically, the only thing you do with all the EV is give it some washer fluid and change tires. And that's about it. And we'll change wiper blades, but that's about it. I mean, it's very non um, serviceable type of machine that doesn't require a lot of maintenance. So I think you may see people start understanding that and find out that the convenience of charging your vehicle at home may outweigh that of uh, buying uh, an ICE. Now there are still a lot of people that like to buy the uh, uh, combination of that. So you get the, a lot of hybrid people buying cars because they like the convenience of plugging in your car, you know, getting 50 to 100 miles out of it and never turning on the combustion engine. But then there's those people that like to have the convenience of going from electricity to the internal combustion engine when they're traveling. You know, in Germany, they yanked the subsidies for buying electric cars at the end of 2023. Uh -huh. Right now, today, through uh, most of 2025, sales are almost back to where they were before. Yeah. Maybe that would happen in the U.S. Well, the other thing that we see, we're seeing happen right now, John, is a, a fall in the price of electric vehicles because the price for the batteries are coming down. That was one of the things that was in Bob Lee's chart this morning showing a huge reduction of, you know, 70 times reduction over the last two, three decades of cost of the uh, electric vehicle battery. So that's a substantial drop. Where, where do you think we are right now in the cost of, uh, you know, kilowatt hour at, uh, the, at the pack level, well, more or the, less? At the pack level, it's somewhere between, say, 100 to $120 per kilowatt hour. But in China, they're a lot lower. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. And you would know, yeah. having uh, been the CTO of CATL. Yeah, yeah. 
It's, it's still quite a, an honor to have helped start that company, John. It was a, a remarkable experience. Yeah, it really was. Anything else that's caught your eye here at the show? Just the sheer volume, John. Each year we've added a few thousand people each year and it's continuing to grow. We have thir over 1,350 exhibitors in the exhibition floor this year. Last year it was 1,150. So that means that something is really driving the market and it's still the belief that batteries are the choice of energy storage for the future. We don't see any other energy device that we know of in the, in the industry that can compete with batteries on how they store energy. Yeah, now I've been wandering around the show and I can confirm what you're saying. This is a really healthy show. The level of uh, exhibits here are impressive and it's people from all over the world. Uh huh. Well, we have a booth from Australia way back in the back. We just got through talking with a bunch of Aussies. Uh, they're, they're here in force. And we got a, a German display back there. I honestly just happened to got out of the uh, plenary sessions and got on the uh, floor today. So I haven't got around to see all, uh, all the different displays that people got. Well, Bob, thanks for your time. Always a pleasure to run into you. Likewise. Thank you, John. The automotive industry continues to evolve, and so do the opportunities to define it. Borg Warner, one of the world's most admired companies, gets its partners where they need to go. Let's do something big, together.